Dreamhouse Bio Digesters. In this video, we are going to learn how to construct a bio digester using blocks. Now, we do have the various types of bio digesters that we construct for homeowners. We have the prefabricated slabs that we use. Some people also use bricks as well. But we are going to consider using blocks and specifically the corridors type of block for this particular construction. So preferably the 5 inches. If you do get the 4 inches, it also works well. You are going to have to measure the ground. You are going to, in the first place, have to select and mark and prepare the site. And then you are going to have to dig the ground based on the measurement that you have decided. It can be a standard size digester. It can be a medium size. It can also be a large family size or a commercial one, depending on the capacity of the property for which you are constructing the bio digester for. So if you do have that in mind, and then you have dug your ground and you have done your marking, then you know that you are starting with the construction. Obviously, the first thing is to do some concrete works at the base, and then from there. You can start laying the blocks. You have to make sure that you use the rope. You are also using your spirit level and then your trowel together with everything that comes with constructed by digester as a mason. Usually, I prefer those who will do the block work for you if you are a constructor and you are not skilled in the masonry work of the block or brick laying, then it's best you contract one to have it done for you because the final finishing and the outlook of the right digester is also key for you and the homeowner the technicalities that are involved to make sure that your digester stands firm and it stands the test of time is also key for you when you're constructing a bio digester and you're using blocks in terms of your place that you'll be standing to do the, the concrete work is key if it's a a bit of a clay or the ground is not that good and the best thing is to put some chippings on the on the ground and then you can step on it so that it becomes firm for you later when you are doing the screeding and you are doing the base the base work mortar can be added to it just to firm the ground enough for your sloping of the gradient that goes into your leche pipe so that's very very key for you if it's a ground that you know is waterlogged, then I also ask that probably you can lay the black rubber polishing back on the floor just to help the water that comes from the base or comes from the ground not coming to disturb and worry the biodigester. Remember the key part when it comes to biodigester construction is making sure that the water table is something that you are matching it to. You are not hitting the water table so that water will not come into the digester. And then secondly, you do have enough gradient for the water to go away if it does come into the digester. So in laying the block, you have to leave the outlet pipe, the leche pipe, or the soak away pipe, the pipe that leaves the soak away pipe, make it available, and then leave the space there for the pipe to be done immediately after the first coat of the block has been done. It's key because you don't want to lay it all over before you come chiseling to have it done. So it's important to put your pipe in. It can be a three inch pipe, it can be a four inch pipe. And the options, as has been discussed in some of the previous videos, the leche pipe being directed is going into a soco pit or is going into a soak away, traditional soak away with the block work, or it's simply going into a bigger drainage outside or a gutter. Where the wastewater which comes from the digester after filtration can go there for easy disposal that's key for you and the leche pipe leading to the soco pit or the soak away has to be at a good level so that any water that leaves the digester can also leave the slope can take it all the way into the soak away or into wherever the wastewater or your black water is going you are required to make sure the size is right Ideally, the, the distance between the digester bed and then the soak away should be minimum of four feet away. The longer away it is, the better. 
na if you are economizing land, you are making maximum use of the land, four feet away is okay. Four to five feet, six feet is okay. So that the digester is not affected by any water that might be pouring the ground where you are having the waste water going to. If you are doing the, the drain flow system, then you have to perforate the base of the leche pipe and then put some chippings on the leche pipe, the place that you have dug for the waste water to be directed through the drain flow pipe onto the earth surface. So in the normal circumstances, you depending on the inlet pipe that's coming and then depending on the pipes, the gradient that you have in the house, the number of blocks or the layers of blocks that you go will be determined by the inlet pipe that will be coming. So, for example, if you are constructing the biodigester using blocks and then the pipe coming from the house is about half a meter, you will be required to lay about four coats or four layers of blocks so that the biodigester will go onto the third layer or the second layer depending on the on the on the length or the level and then the last coat which is the fourth coat will be the one that will show up for the final groundworks that will be done. Now sometimes you can only lay three coats and then it's fine because then the inlet pipe coming from the house is on the surface and the footing of the building is enough and it's good for you. So you don't have to drop it that deep for you to get the angle. And then since you are going to get two feet difference from the, the shape pipe and the inlet pipe, then you are good to go in that situation. Those are key technicalities that you need to know when you are constructing a biodigester. Sometimes if the homeowner asks you to construct a biodigester and probably you've not discussed with the plumber and you don't know the levels or the angles in which is bringing the pipes, you can go and do the biodigester using the blocks as lay your blocks and then do everything for it and leave don't leave pipes there for the plumber to come and connect because probably when he's bringing it either he falls at the base or he comes on top so you can just leave it for him when he comes there he can use the chisel and then get his hole done and then he can drop in at the angle that will be good for him because i know people occasionally do some of the digesters and they do not get the level right so when the plumber comes he will tell you the way you have laid the inlet pipe for me my pipe will not meet it so if you do not know the angle in which the toilet is coming from and you are not setting on the greater level just go ahead and do your digester and when the plumber is ready and chisel the inlet pipe for him and have it put in there for him dream house bio digesters constructed of biodegradable with bio digesters in ghana and general home improvement. This is a channel dedicated to the construction of biodigesters, biodegradable waste biodigesters for homeowners who are looking at the option of using them for managing their human waste and their toilet waste water. How to construct a biodigester using blocks. So we do have the construction that we do with the precast slabs, and then we do have the construction that we do using blocks. If you are using the quarry dust blocks, usually what we ask is that you get the right type, which is the five inches. If you do use a six inches, it means that you have to resize the biodigester in such a way. You have enough room in the digester bed so that you can lay your porous or your slab, your porous slab in the digester bed. Some people have also asked me why we do not plaster the inside of the biodigester and I tell them because you are using quarry dust blocks sometimes it's not necessary to plaster the inside because you are also making sure that you want the digester to breathe even though it's not using oxygen what you are looking at is not to make the digester moist by, by rendering the inside if the type of block that you are using is the ordinary sand one then to make it firmer then you can render and plaster the inside if it's a quarry dust block, after the laying of the blocks, it's okay 
you can only render the outside and then render the top secure the, and render the top slab to make sure it's secure to the bio digester you are also remember that when you are constructing a bio digester the other steps that you need to take preparation of the so-called pit area for the black water in this case this particular one the idea was plumber was going to connect it into a traditional soaker way the reason why now we do recommend the traditional soaker way is because it lasts longer it's, it's safer for, for the environment you are not going to have problems with your neighbors or anybody because you have gone to drop your black water in a gutter or in a drainage system and it's passing through somebody's house and the person is complaining that they scent or something smell is coming through their house so the safe option most of the time now is to have the the traditional soak away done depending on the size the four feet by four feet is a five feet or six feet depth the five feet by five six feet depth depending on the capacity of the uh, of the of the building and the number of toilet rooms that are in the house you can do the soak hole pits or the soak away just to match that one specifically if you do have a good land and the place is okay and then you are going to consider a so called pit, then make sure that you are getting the level right. The end, you are, you are covering the end of the leche pipe with a vent cap, like I've shown in this previous video of how to construct a so called pit the right way. You make sure that the screening that you are going to do will be done in such a way that it leads all the way to the soco pit or the soak away the idea is that rapid separation must happen in a biodigester the wastewater must be separated from the human waste and the wastewater is what goes all the way into the soak away the human waste stays in the digester the biodegradation takes place and then it decomposes it, the human waste and that's what can be easily disposed after a certain number of years. And people are in doubt and they wonder how does it happen. And we say that the reason why when you say biodigester smell, and I argue and I say that it's not true is because if you do separate the wastewater from the biodigester, um, human waste in the digester, that problem of having the smell, which happens usually in the septic system, will not arise. The reason why the human waste smells or it stinks is because the water is mixed with the human waste. And that one is what leads to the maggots and all the stuff that come with it. So we are going to just simply going to separate the wastewater for the digester. And that ensures that the human waste is what the microorganisms or the microbes will feed on. And then it works to the desired level in which we want it. So the screening is key for us in the sense that we have to make sure we get it right. We have to get a good air right, and the water must lead away. Any stagnant water in the digester is not good for the digester. And that one might cause the digester not to work well to the desired level. When you get to the desired level, probably in our case, the third coat, we do have the inlet that's for the house. So the inlet pipes are usually designed or they've been done in such a way that is for the toilets that are coming from the house it can be two it can be three or it can be four depending on the type of the digester and the type of property that you are having the inlet pipes will then come and it has to be done at an angle where the plumber will bring the toilets from the house and come and connect them you can decide to have several two or three different inlet pipes in one digester it doesn't matter the angle it's coming from. The idea is that you do not want the pipes to be running around the house all over to go and join each other. And that leads to the toilet getting stuck in the pipe. So sometimes if you do get two or three inlet pipes, the better it is. So it, there's no nothing wrong with that if you have to do another inlet pipe for a bite just apart from the original one that you have done. And the inlet pipes must solely be done just for the pipes from the house to be connected to the bio digester it must be held firmly in place in and out so that it doesn't shake and it doesn't affect the biodigester and then you will have to 
install the biodigester filter bed. Before preparing that one, make sure your gradient and the slot and the screening is done. And then you firm inside the biodigester bed. And then you can put the biodigester filter bed, which in the first place is the porous filter bed, on the blocks in the digester. And depending on the type of digester that you have done, the size and the space that you get is where you put it in. Place the pervious concrete or the porous slab on the biodigester bed. The idea is that instead of using the wire mesh and stuff, now we do have slabs that we put inside the biodigester bed. These slabs are just for holding the load together and it's for making sure that the wastewater seeps through them and then we do perforate them and then the wastewater seeps through them into the screening and then through the the shape pipe into the soak away or the soak hole pit. So that's why if you do have a, a digester and you are worried about or the type of chemicals or detergent that you use, no worry no more. Because these are the filter bed that we use now. And then you can take any type of detergent or bleach or parazone or acacia. It's not going to get corroded and it's going to work to perfection. So you lay them on a block just for the biodigester bed make sure it fits in your digester is four feet a bad digester filter bed or the porous has to be less it has to be three feet so that when you do the measurement then it will fit in perfectly if it does not fit you will have to do some chiseling for it to fit into the digester bed perfectly you do lay them inside and then you add the fiber net on top of it then you do add your fiber net, the coconut husk on it. You, then you put the fiber, fiber material, the biodegradation material inside them. And this is how you prepare your bio digester bed using blocks. And then you cover it with the top slab, making sure that your inlet is not covered and there's enough coconut husk and fiber inside the bio digester bed biodegradation is going to happen by using this particular materials you can then cover it with the top slab and then use mortar to seal it airtight you do not need any vent pipe on your bio digester the vent pipe must be on the burden and the vent pipes must be done for the burden itself the bio digester works in such a way that it does not need any air in terms of oxygen works in an oxygen free environment and it doesn't need any vent pipe on it so in this particular case as you can see the soak away the traditional soak away is what has been attached to the digester and then the shape pipe has just gone into that particular soak away and then we put a white inspection chamber four inches one on it just for inspection in, in, in case the homeowner is using it and they have some doubt, they can open it and see the level or whatever it is that is inside. And then if there's any problem, the servicing can be done depending on what time. The next video that is coming up will explain to you into details how biodigesters work and how you can use it as an option in managing your solid waste and your human waste in your dream house.